super popular diet, but what is it? What kind of foods can you eat? Is it good for you? What are the downsides of trying Fasting keto? Fasting is one of the hottest diets out there, if you want to call it a keto diet. Keto may be the latest in fat diets. It's had promising results elsewhere. Most profoundly transformational concept and strategy as it pertains to health the and aging. The ketogenic diet. Let's break down what all this hype is about. Forget everything you may have heard about diets and dieting. Are you ready to imagine a world where you can still eat bacon and lose weight? That's right, bacon. The main reason is that less than 5% of the population are vegetarian. This is a diet where, if you wish, meat can still be a big part of your dietary needs. Famous, and let's face it, pretty hot-looking people that have followed this diet include Kim Kardashian, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> well, we might be kidding on the last one. If you want to have your cake and eat it, as long as that's keto-friendly cake, then today we're talking about eating your way to a healthier, slimmer you with a side of intermittent fasting. Or are you the sort of person who hasn't eaten an egg yolk since since the 90s. Well, they're allowed to, as is chicken. We'll leave it up to you to decide which comes first. Every time you eat fatty foods, do you feel guilty? You know, like when the doctor asks you about alcohol consumption, or like OJ Simpson, perhaps like a nun feels doing squats in a cucumber field. Are you of a body shape that means every time you put on skinny jeans, you look like a parsnip? Perhaps the greatest thing about a keto diet is that it leaves you feeling full and not constantly pining for food. So we say, don't let the hunger games begin, and with keto and fasting, the odds will forever be in your favor. I'd also say, buckle up, but you might be struggling to get it around you. So sit back as we take a deep dive into the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. Today, we will discuss the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting, which have recently become as popular as making stupid people famous. Keto and fasting attract increasing attention among those who want to adopt a healthy lifestyle. Nowadays, healthy nutrition and weight management are becoming increasingly important. In this context, the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting have become effective nutrition strategies that are the Batman and Robin of weight loss. But if you follow this diet, unlike those guys, you won't just want to come out at night. It's certainly about time one of them came out. The ketogenic diet has become a preferred diet for fat burning, while also being applied for treatment purposes. It is based on a scientific foundation. It it is used as a treatment method for neurological diseases, epilepsy patients, and even individuals undergoing cancer treatment. Today, it has been observed that balancing insulin secretion in diabetic and obese individuals has led to a rapid reduction in fat percentage. This has made it popular among individuals with weight problems. That means no more telling people your BMI is fine. It's just that you're too short for it to balance outright. The most distinctive feature of the ketogenic diet is its macro distribution, which can be adjusted to have a low carbohydrate, high fat, and sufficient protein content. Intermittent fasting is a well-known diet model worldwide. It is particularly popular among those who want to burn fat or maintain their shape. In short, our bodies react to certain balances of diet, and that can see fat disappear faster than an American Idol semi-finalist getting the boot. Intermittent fasting is a nutrition model that involves consuming meals at specific intervals while abstaining from food during other times. However, you can still drink beverages such as water, tea, and coffee during your fasting. Apparently, vodka and soda has zero carbs too but you never heard that from us. Do not drink alcohol when fasting. This can only lead to embarrassing social media posts and waking up with a road cone on your head. It's important to note that intermittent fasting primarily focuses on what you eat rather than when you eat. As such, the content of your meals takes precedence over the timing of your meals. Now let's talk about the basics of ketogenic diet. When it comes to weight gain, you've got 99 problems and the chips are one. Mind you looking at Jay-Z today, 99 seems a conservative number. Here's how you can lose weight by eating. I know that sounds a bit like saying I get my groceries from a vegetarian butcher, but hang in until we explain. The ketogenic diet is a unique diet that involves consuming high amounts of fat and low amounts of carbohydrates. This diet has been used for different health reasons, such as helping with weight loss, managing epilepsy, a condition that causes seizures, and even supporting cancer treatment. Studies have suggested that the ketogenic diet can be effective for people struggling with obesity by helping them lose weight and improving how their bodies respond to insulin. For individuals with epilepsy, especially children who have seizures that are difficult to control with medication, the ketogenic diet has been used as a treatment option for a long time. Research has shown that it can reduce the number of seizures and improve brain function. Although when it comes to improving brain function, the diet has so far proven ineffective on people who believe the earth is flat. The ketogenic diet works by putting the body into a state called ketosis. This means the body starts using fat 
fat for energy instead of carbohydrates. Moreover, the ketogenic diet may help reduce oxidative stress in people who are overweight, which suggests it could have benefits beyond just weight management. Oxidative stress is a condition that may occur when there are too many unstable molecules called free radicals in the body and not enough antioxidants to get rid of them. This can lead to cell and tissue damage. In summary, the ketogenic diet can help manage obesity, epilepsy, and potentially cancer. Its effects on metabolism and reducing oxidative stress contribute to its benefits. However, more research is needed to understand how it works fully, its long-term effects, and the best ways to use it for different health conditions. But the science will probably come good. Some things just take a little time. People used to think it took seven years to digest gum. You actually can't digest it at all. But wait, if carbs are low, where does your body get the necessary glucose to function? Here, ketosis comes into play. Ketosis is when your body starts burning fat for energy because it's not getting enough glucose from carbs. This lowers your blood sugar and insulin levels. Your body then makes ketones for energy instead. You can tell if you're in ketosis by checking your breath. People in ketosis sometimes have breath that smells a bit like acetone. By the way, acetone is nail varnish remover. But having people think you work in a nail parlor is a small sacrifice. And if you're a 300-pound Serbian Hells Angel, it may be an image upgrade. When you first start ketosis, you might feel a bit off, like headaches or dizziness. But once your body gets used to it, these feelings usually disappear. Later, you might feel more energetic and creative and have trouble sleeping. So, what do you eat on a ketogenic diet? You avoid carbs like bread, pasta, rice, and starchy vegetables. Yes, that does mean saying goodbye to potatoes for a while, but at least you'll no longer be the same shape as one. Instead, you focus on low-carb veggies like spinach, kale, zucchini, and cucumber. You also skip sugary foods, sweets, and anything made with syrups. And sorry, no alcohol either, because it can mess with ketosis. It can also mess with your judgment. Although calling up your ex when drunk after losing 30 pounds may be worth it, just to brag. You can still enjoy eggs, meat, and nuts on a ketogenic diet. But be careful with dairy products, as some of them contain carbs. Mind you, cutting back on the cheese will also help with all those weird dreams you've been having about being chased by Ed Sheeran and the back of a giant chicken. We've all been there. And you can eat plenty of high-fat foods, like nuts, seeds, avocados, and fatty fish. Just make sure to choose healthy fats. Stick to this for a couple of months and hey presto, you're no longer having to put on your belt with a boomerang. Following a keto diet plan involves consuming foods low in carbs, moderate in protein, and high in healthy fats. Here's a list of foods you can eat for this kind of diet. For healthy fats, avocado, olive oil, coconut oil, butter, nuts, and seeds. For protein sources, fatty cuts of meat, poultry, fish, seafoods, and eggs. For low-carb vegetables, leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, zucchini, mushrooms, and tomatoes. For berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Now, for the foods to avoid, high-carb foods such as grains, starchy vegetables, legumes, sugary foods, and processed foods. Also avoid fruits high in sugar, like bananas, grapes, mangoes, oranges, and apples. You should also avoid sugary beverages such as soda, fruit juices, sweetened tea, and too much coffee. Please note this is an extensive list, not your weekly grocery shop. To succeed on a keto diet, it is crucial to keep your carbohydrate intake low, prioritize healthy fats, and consume moderate protein. While portion control plays a vital role in weight management, focusing on these food choices can help you stay in ketosis and enjoy the benefits of a ketogenic lifestyle. Listening to your body's hunger and fullness cues can guide your eating habits. One common mistake people make when following a ketogenic diet is failing to keep track of their carbohydrate intake. Even a tiny amount of carbohydrates can disrupt ketosis. On the ketogenic diet, carbohydrate intake is limited to 50 grams or less per day, the state where your body burns fat for energy instead of carbohydrates. Therefore, it is essential to be cautious with your carbohydrate consumption. Caloric intake still matters when trying to lose weight. The ketogenic diet is a short-term solution. If you plan to follow it for a while, consider taking supplements and monitoring your health. Regular checkups with your doctor are also important. Please don't leave things too long that you find yourself at the doctor's grabbing his stethoscope and shouting give me a cheeseburger and fries into it. The ketogenic diet is typically recommended for individuals with diabetes, insulin resistance, or obesity. However, before starting this diet, you must consult your doctor or a dietitian. It's important to remember that this diet is not a magic solution for weight loss. You must still eat healthily
slowly and exercise regularly to achieve your desired results. That means if the only crunch in your life is the sound of bacon, you need to combine that with the gym type. Let's now discuss the fundamentals of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has gained popularity as a method of managing weight and improving overall health. Research suggests that intermittent fasting can help with weight loss and promote a healthier body. This eating plan involves taking breaks from eating, which could help our bodies function better, keep our brains healthy as we age, and reduce the likelihood of certain diseases. Intermittent fasting is also being used more frequently to help people who are overweight or have obesity, highlighting its potential for managing these health problems. According to studies with both animals and humans, intermittent fasting often means eating less food, which aligns well with how our bodies work. The main weight loss effect is due to the reduction in total calorie intake. Intermittent fasting might prompt our bodies to use fat, protein, and carbs more effectively to regulate blood sugar. Additionally, there are indications that intermittent fasting is linked to positive effects on various health issues, such as obesity, diabetes, heart diseases, high blood pressure, and diseases that affect our brains, possibly due to changes in the beneficial bacteria in our guts. Let's discuss different intermittent fasting methods and their effects on our bodies. Unlike male contraception, when it comes to fasting, there's no one size fits all. Intermittent fasting is when you cycle between periods of eating and fasting. There are a few popular methods. 16-8 method. This is the most common one. You fast for 16 hours and have an 8-hour eating window. Usually, people skip breakfast and eat between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. Please note that doesn't mean you go at it like rabbits in spring for the whole 8 hours. 18-6 method. This method is similar to the 16-8 method, but has a more extended fasting period of 18 hours and a shorter eating window of 6 hours. 24 method. Even shorter eating window of 4 hours, with a fasting period of 20 hours. Another method is the 5-2 method. You eat you usually five days a week and then eat very few calories on the other two days. Since nutrition content is open to interpretation, many combinations have been derived from intermittent fasting by combining it with different diet types. The most well-known is keto fasting, a combined version of the ketogenic diet. In this model, the ketogenic diet system is applied within intermittent fasting limits. It can be a little testing, but sticking to it gets amazing results. If you are fasting and somebody keeps on offering you food, just try to say to yourself, it's God's way of testing you. And if you don't believe in God, blame it on capitalism. Another standard version is its combination with the one meal a day diet or OMAD in short. OMAD is a version that is applied more frequently within the limits of 20 hours of fasting and four hours of freedom. Famous practitioners of OMAD include Chris Martin of Coldplay and Bruce Springsteen. That's why they call Bruce the boss. Being in such good shape, it's no wonder he was born to run. Now, let's talk about the effects of intermittent fasting on our bodies. When you fast, your body undergoes changes that can benefit your health. It's like the opposite of puberty. For instance, fasting can increase your growth hormone levels, which can help you burn fat and build muscle. Additionally, fasting can lower insulin levels, making it easier for your body to use stored fat for energy. Fasting can also trigger autophagy, cleaning out damaged or old proteins from your cells and making them healthier. The breakdown products are then recycled for important cell functions, especially during periods of stress or starvation. With all that positive recycling, it's almost as if your body goes eco-friendly or is being run by Greta Thunberg. Intermittent fasting can be beneficial for weight loss as it can increase metabolism and burn more calories. It can also improve insulin sensitivity and reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Plus, it can promote better brain health too. However, it's important to note that intermittent fasting isn't suitable for everyone. Looking at you, Kate Moss, the way it works can vary from person to person, so it's always a good idea to consult with your doctor before starting any new diet or fasting plan, especially if you have any medical conditions or are pregnant. So, while intermittent fasting can be a great way to improve your health and lose weight, it's essential to find what works best for you and listen to your body. Now let's focus on some common mistakes that you should be wary of. Changing your meal times can become stressful in your daily life. By researching intermittent fasting systems, you can start with a system that has shorter fasting periods and gradually transition to the 16, 8, or 24 systems. Intermittent fasting is basically about when you eat rather than what you eat. Adapting to the eating pattern and making healthy choices is essential. Otherwise, we won't get any benefits. With fewer meals and a relatively limited eating capacity, you might consume fewer calories and macros than you need during your free time. Even if you're not counting your meals 
meals in terms of calories, you should still check their macro values and make sure they meet your minimum requirements based on your weight and physical characteristics. Especially for individuals with diabetes or insulin resistance, jumping straight into intermittent fasting can cause significant imbalances in blood sugar and insulin levels. It's crucial for people with these conditions to be informed about carbohydrate counting and to consume balanced meals with a distribution of carbohydrates, no matter which eating pattern they choose to follow. A good strategy is gently breaking your fast with fruit or salad, or both if you have a tomato. Yeah, we know it's supposed to be a fruit, but do you ever see them in fruit salads? Case closed. Then, followed by a full meal would be more appropriate. This way, your stomach will gradually get used to food, and fibrous foods will prevent overeating. Consuming large portions and heavy, high-calorie meals when breaking your fast can cause indigestion, stomach pain, and lethargy. Make sure you're eating enough. Don't opt for minimal portions to create a calorie deficit during your free time. Your body needs calories to sustain your energy in the next fasting period. For individuals who regularly exercise, pre- and post-workout nutrition is crucial as it determines the effectiveness of our workouts. In intermittent fasting systems, pre- and post-workout meals must be adjusted according to the exercise quality. Quality exercise can involve gyms, sports, or running. I got a paper cut and didn't want to get it infected. Or putting your gym gear through a shredder are still not strong enough excuses for getting out of it. If you don't have the opportunity to adapt your meals due to time constraints and need to skip meals, it's not recommended to follow this system. Unfortunately, the belief that everyone will experience similar development will be quite disappointing. Age, height, weight, lifestyle, genetic factors, gender, and many other determinants will affect the results of this eating pattern. If applied for weight loss, this process will vary for each individual. Comparing yourself with others you see on social media or in your surroundings would be a big mistake. Keep your journey realistic and personal. Since ketogenic and intermittent fasting have become popular, what if we combine these two approaches? Some experts think a combination of these two diets makes sense. While the keto diet increases ketone levels in the body, ketone levels also rise during fasting. This reduces the brain's dependence on glucose for energy. Therefore, the transition to a ketogenic state becomes smooth after a few weeks of following a low-carb or ketogenic diet. Experts at Cleveland Clinic's Functional Ketogenic Program recommend this strategy to their patients. Intermittent fasting can take your weight loss process to the next level. Because people who practice intermittent fasting consume fewer calories, which can help overcome pauses in the weight loss process. Additionally, the keto diet may be a natural progression for those who feel full by eating lots of fat and don't mind shortening their eating times. Let us now compare ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. Principles. Remember, ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting are two different concepts. Ketogenic diet focuses on high fat, moderate protein, and deficient carbohydrate intake to induce a state of ketosis, where the body burns fat for fuel instead of glucose. On the other hand, intermittent fasting involves cycling between periods of eating and fasting, using various methods, such as the 16 8 method or the 5 2 method. Weight loss. In terms of weight loss capabilities, both keto and intermittent fasting can lead to weight loss by reducing calories calorie intake and promoting fat burning. Keto restricts carbs, leading to decreased appetite and lower calorie consumption. Intermittent fasting limits, eating windows naturally leading to fewer meals and calories consumed. Health benefits, both of these can yield significant health benefits. Keto for one can improve insulin sensitivity, blood sugar, and triglyceride levels. It has also shown promise in managing conditions like epilepsy and neurodegenerative diseases. Meanwhile, intermittent fasting can enhance metabolic health, reduce inflammation, improve heart health, and promote promote cellular repair processes like autophagy. Ease of adherence. In terms of ease of adherence, keto may be challenging at first since it requires strict macronutrient tracking and may involve initial side effects like the keto flu as the body adapts to using ketones for fuel. Intermittent fasting is generally easier to follow for many people. However, some may need help to fast for extended periods initially. Customization. Both keto and intermittent fasting can be customized to fit individual preferences and lifestyles. You can adjust the timing and duration of fasting periods in intermittent fasting and modify the macronutrient ratios in keto to suit your needs. Ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting offer unique weight loss and overall health benefits. The best approach depends on individual goals, preferences, and medical considerations. Some may succeed with one method over the other, while others may benefit from combining elements of both. It's essential to consult with a healthcare professional or nutrition expert to determine the most suitable approach for you. Please, also, not your best mate Brian, the electrician, is not a real expert. Just look at him. You know, four fat people and three of them are him. In summary, the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting offer unique benefits for weight loss and overall health. Whether you choose one or opt for a hybrid approach like keto fasting, it's essential to find what works best for you and your body. Remember, 
Patience and realistic goals are critical to any health journey. So, here's to embracing a healthier lifestyle, one meal at a time. That concludes our discussion about the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. Whether you're leaning towards keto, intermittent fasting, or even considering a fusion of both, the key is to find a sustainable approach that aligns with your goals and lifestyle. So there you have it. Butter up that bacon and bacon up that sausage. With the right monitoring and combination, you'll soon be saying goodbye to unwanted fat faster. Take your time to experiment. Listen to your body and don't fear seeking professional guidance. Let's journey towards better health, one mindful choice at a time. If you want to see more health, nutrition, and lifestyle tips, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications with the bell icon. Stay healthy and happy.